Okay. Huh. Well, that's cool. Yay. What's going on, Guardians? This will be one of my first top 10, 7, 5s, whichever one it may be, in the Taken King and Destiny. Today is going to be a very broad subject, which is just weapons in general. Which ones you want to have on your slots, which usually find their way into there the most often. There are two categories, PvP and PvE. It is apples and oranges comparing the two, so when there is a weapon on this list and it's higher than something that you may like, it does not mean that that one is all around just amazing and your gun sucks because, you know, it's too lower. No, if it's on the list, it's good. If it's not on the list and you like it, go ahead and say so. Being a guardian, I tend to have some biased opinions and I'd also like to be enlightened as to why you like your certain gun. But anyways, that's enough talking about exactly what it is. Let's just get into it and show you the top seven weapons in Destiny. Little subtitles, The Taken King. To clear things up, I want to add that The Taken King has been adding a lot of weapons with a time barrier. That includes Sleeper Simulant and, quite recently, No Time to Explain. No Time to Explain has been the last exotic that I have seen that has been out during the making of this video. And as you can tell by the background, it is the Festival of the Lost, so that kind of narrows it down to the time frame. So if any more weapons do come out, which I'm absolutely positively sure that they will, there is no need to waste your breath in the comments section below talking about how that gun that I had no idea existed is better than the ones on this list. I'm sure there will be better ones. But that's enough, let's get on with it. At number 7, we have the Touch of Malice. Yes, this gun is only good for one thing and one thing only, and that is PvE. But that is why I clarified earlier that PvP and PvE lines are blurred. So this is on here for the strict reason of the raid. The only time this is actually good in the raid is when you have the bubble of immortality. I don't know exactly what it's called. But you are able to shoot unlimited amount of times because the last round regenerates at the cost of your own health. And when you're immortal or invincible, you don't die. You can keep shooting it on forever. So Oryx is a piece of cake. The Wizards, piece of cake. But anything else other than that, it does not come in handy. But because the raid is such an important aspect of Destiny, it is pretty handy to have, and that's what makes it a good gun. It is strictly raid-oriented, and that's the way it was supposed to be, and I'm completely fine with that. At number six, we have the Hawk Saw which is a Vanguard Pulse Rifle, which you're willing to go get. It is on here because one, it tears through people in the Crucible. It may not have the range, but because most maps are focusing on short range and shotguns, Hawksaw is uh, pretty good. Hawksaw was the Pulse Rifle made to rival these shotgun maps. If you haven't already gotten the message, I hate shotguns. I do appreciate shotguns though, but getting sidetracked. The Hawksaw is legendary, so it's great to have an open exotic slot which is one of the reasons that makes it so high up. The average Destiny player is better off using a pulse rifle. The Hawksaw is something that you should probably pick up. At number 5 we have the Thousand Yard Stare. This is one of the few guns that can actually go in between PvP and PvE. With PvP, it's great for certain reasons. One, when you shoot and you miss, you can actually get that bullet back sometimes. I actually have missed quite a few shots in a row before, and I got every single bullet back. It's randomized. So you don't know if you might get it back or not, but that's pretty handy in the Crucible. In PvE, it also has one of the highest damages. So not only will you be able to regenerate your shot if you miss, if you're down the Golgoroth pit and you need to shoot him, that is the highest damage output sniper. Do not take what I just said right there. It might not be. But it has a very high damage output and it will take out Golgoroth if your fire team has a sniper like this very quickly. At number 4 we have the Doom of Chelchis. This is the scout rifle from the raid. Scout rifles have always been a great thing to have in Destiny, always in PvE, more recently in the Crucible. But the Doom, I'm not going to say the last part, can be fired in full automatic, so it is somewhat like I've said before, it is a lazy man scout rifle. You don't need to shoot each bullet. It is the vision of confluence of the Taken King. If you all know the vision of confluence, that was a fantastic gun. It does not have quite the same stability, but because the vision of confluence has been obsolete for the last month. This is the next best thing. And number three, because everyone has their preference and there's three different variations of this thing, I'm just gonna put on all exotic swords. That may sound a little bit cheap, but it's true. They are all fairly similar besides the ultimate attack. Other than that, 
their ultimate attacks can actually be almost the same damage output, and that's why I'm putting all three in the same spot. I put all three for number three. I personally use the Dark Drinker, which is the Void variation of the Exotic Sword. And number two, we have the Red Death. One of the few weapons to actually carry over from the past top 7, 10, and 5, whichever one. The Red Death has always been great. It's a pulse rifle, and what it does is you are able to kill people very easily, and sometimes in two burst shots to the head. If you get every single headshot in the burst, it'll only take you two triggers to pull. For PvE, not so much. I'm going to keep talking about PvP. If someone has it, the odds are they're probably using it. If they don't, it could be the Hawksaw, which is the almost the baby Red Death. The Red Death also has great range, so any size maps will do. Once in a while, you will play on a very close range map, but as long as you keep your distance, you can kill anyone. And keep your distance, those shotgun people aren't able to get you. That's also a great way. And at number one, we have the Zalo Supercell. I did not know this gun was in existence, and when I did the exotic engram drops, and I got this thing, I had no idea what to expect. Looks crazy, looks like an AK-47, just with, you know, lightning coming out of it. But putting aside looks, it's also great because it strings together any and every enemy that you're shooting at. If you're shooting at one Acolyte and there are three around it, all the damage arcs out and connects them all into one great massive DPS pile. A great example would be in the raid, if you have done it, you'll know that in the beginning, there is a group of praying Acolytes and Thrall and usually with that part, all you have to do is just send one person the supercell, just spray, and they'll kill them all. You may say that spraying will reduce your ammo, but here's the thing, is that if you get a double kill, it replenishes half the mag. And because it takes not a lot of bullets to kill a Thrall or an Acolyte, you usually end up having a limited ammo. I've almost, I'm not going to say I have because the odds are that I have are pretty slim, I've almost gone through an entire strike without actually reloading the supercell. Whenever someone says, hold on, I need to pop a primary ammo synthesis, I kind of just laugh and say, don't worry, I'm just going to get a double kill real quick, maybe just two shots. And next thing you know, you have 16 more. The mag usually holds about 32. So the Zalo supercell is one of the craziest weapons to have in Destiny. And that's what makes it at number one. If you're wondering about any other weapons, I can name off a couple. The Sleeper Simulant. I know there's been a lot of hype behind it, like it would be the future Galahorn. I like it. I don't love it. It's a good gun. It can rival a Touch of Malice. There's also another gun that would also rival it, would be the Crucible, the Smolder rocket launcher, and Vertigo, which is a future Warcoat rocket launcher. The reason I say those two is because they both have the perks, Grenades and Horseshoes and Tripod, which are PvP golden perks. You need those. If you're going to be doing Trials, you better have one of these rocket launchers. I know that those there are many other rocket launchers that have those perks, but those are the two rocket launchers that you can actually buy with the perks already on it. So number seven is kind of like a wild card. I chose Touch of Malice because I do the raid a lot and I seem to be using that weapon for some strange reason in the end. I don't know why, maybe it's because it has limited ammo and has double damage also while you're shooting. But anyway guys, that's been it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed. If there are any other guns that you wanted to see on here, or challenge my opinions, go straight on ahead. I read every single comment. But as I said before, that's been it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one. Happy Festival of Lost Souls. And that saying will be irrelevant very quickly. So I don't know why I said that. Later, Guardians.